welcome back to New Zealand Dairy Farmer. As part of ongoing research into the mental and physical health of rural communities and dairy farmers, regular surveys are taken to provide up-to-date data that can be acted on. And what did the mm. recent survey show up uh, in general terms uh, about dairy farmers' um, well-being? Basically, we, there's only under 10% smoke compared with 20% in the rest of the community. Great. Mm. There's some good things happening. But there's also some real areas for concern. So what's the uh, solution that uh, can be put in place? It's a case of self, yeah. self-help in lots of instances? Um, it is. I think it's um, encouraging people. And what happens after farmers have got these results, we give them a little business card of their, their own personal results. And if they're not um, looking the flashest, we will encourage them to go to the doctor. Um, and, and follow up. We're not offering treatment in anything we've been doing, but we are saying, this is where you're at today, what can you do about it? And we are really excited with the number of farmers that have taken control of their own situations. They've either gone for help, they've changed their diet, they've changed their lifestyle and made a conscious effort to do something about it. Um, and there is more longer, to, pro, longer term projects in the wind that um, to support that education and um, redirection of people in their diet or their, their lifestyle. Um, and the other um, evolution from the Ag Research Survey into mental wellness, that's another whole lot of statistics. Uh, I guess that what's been in the publicity lately is that there's 19.5 no, farmers take their own life per 100,000 people, um, which is nearly twice the city-based um, statistics. Um, and that, that really is after farm accidents is the biggest killer on farm. I think there's uh, quite a few things involved in that. Um, we're isolated, there's often the means to do it, um, and, and people are feeling overstretched. So I, I, when we can, we can show with the statistics that there is a huge amount of stress-related illness and sometimes it's very hard to say the chicken or the egg, I think, related in there. A big mm. way of dealing uh, with all these issues yeah. is to talk about it. Absolutely. Why are dairy farmers so poor at doing that when mm. they're in a cooperative industry and generally get along very well with their counterparts? Uh, yes, I think they do, and um, that's a little bit about where Smash came from too, to connect farmers to farmers. I think I think it does happen, but I think our rural communities have struggled with the motor car and with things like Skype. It's easier actually to talk to my brother-in-law in Wales than, uh, than it is necessarily to talk to a neighbour that I don't know very well. I think the world has changed hugely, and it's put... Um, an enormous amount of pressure on rural communities, perhaps especially the ones closer to towns. When, as you get more isolated, people have to be dependent on each other. Um, that there, would be an observation. <laughs> is there an indication there that perhaps the individuality of dairy farmers, male dairy farmers in particular, that needs to sort of break down to a certain extent, that they shouldn't keep on their own, doing their own thing, battling on when it would be yeah. better to call on help? I, I think so, I think so. And um, I'm very grateful to John Kerwin. I think his whole campaign around depression and mental health has had a huge positive effect. There is health out there and people know, oh, what if it was him, it might have been me, and maybe it is okay if I feel like this, there's things that can be done. Um, from our um, health pit, shop, pit stop um, project, we actually go through the mental health survey and hand out little cards with the helplines on it, um, Rural Support Trust um, and, and the other helplines involved, involved in the community. And on the back there's a little um, guidelines of what might be showing um, for you that maybe you do need to go and get help and involve your GP too of course that hopefully has a family history. Um, and that they've been something positive and we said hey maybe somebody in your community could use this too, please pass it on and, and that felt a good step. But I think there's actually six steps that, that anybody can take. One is having adequate sleep, one is having adequate food, one is being part of, of a wider community of friends and family. Um, I think a, a spiritual dimension to your life certainly helps. Um, 
and, and then a perception of who you are as a person and f fulfilling your own dreams. Of those mm. six points, where are dairy farmers perhaps most often the weakest? Well, I, yeah, that's hard. I think perhaps in our younger dairy farming community, this whole issue is around food and sleep. <laughs> um, and for other ones, um, yes, it's a reluctance to be involved in the wider community. So, so how yeah. do you go about and correcting some of those issues? They're very yes. long-term solutions, Absolutely, aren't they? they are, they are. And to a certain extent, the individual needs to take responsibility for his own health and well-being. Um, I don't think anybody can actually tell a farmer, or maybe a lot of males, exactly what to do. <laughs> um, and I guess I can come back to our personal example. My um, husband had uh, always done his own thing, always been fit and healthy, and he, um, he eventually said, I think I'll just go for a well-man checkup." And I just about fell off my chair. I would never have made him a doctor's appointment because he wouldn't have kept it anyway. And so he did, and the doctor said, oh, I think you might actually have a heart murmur. And he came home and I said, oh, what a load of rhubarb, well, you know. And he waited two years to get a check at the hospital. And sure enough, it was. And within six months, he actually had heart surgery that saved his life 12 years ago. So, um, you know, for me, it's very real that um, we need to be proactive at keeping ourselves well. And part of that is to have a well man's check, whether you think you need it or not. But um, he had to be mm, proactive and take absolutely, the first step, absolutely. otherwise nothing would have and, happened. And the whole dynamics around that, when are you a wife, when are you the business partner, and when, when are you just a nagger, especially when you're going to the cow shed together. You know, there's a whole balancing act of, of how to inspire people to care for themselves. And I think that's what the pit stops have done too. Are the dynamics slightly different for the younger generation where perhaps uh, women farmers take a more equal role or maybe more often work Absolutely. off farm and don't have the chance to observe uh, their husband or partner I, at quite such think, close quarters? I, yeah, I think that could be an issue, yeah. Um, but I also think women are, that are active in the dairy world are very proactive at seeing the big picture. Yeah. And what about that very important role of passing these messages on to the next generation? How can dairy farmers be uh, telling their children not to fall into the same yeah. health traps perhaps they have? I, and I think that actually shows in so many of our children that don't want to be dairy farmers, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I think you've got to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. <laughs> Um, and by doing it for 40 years, I think we have walked the walk. <laughs> so it's leading by example. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, um, it, it's sustainability of the people. What's the use of a healthy bottom line if you're not alive to enjoy it? I think that's the message. Right. New Zealand Dairy Farmer is proudly brought to you by Hanson Products, providing Kiwi farmers with water system solutions for over 50 years.